Okay, so <clears throat> we were looking at the special cases, and so I said I look at five special cases, and we already looked at case one in the previous class, in which we had two axes which are parallel, and then I pointed out that so we have the problem that there are infinite number of common normals. And we said that we'll just pick the common normal which passes through the earlier axis so that the di parameter goes to zero. And then there are a couple of other nice things, alpha is zero, and the link length is obviously the distance between the parallel lines. Now we look at the second case where we have two rotation axes, successive rotation axes which are perpendicular to each other and they intersect each other. And we already saw that that is not a very unusual case, it keeps happening. Now if the axis intersect, the length of the common normal goes to zero, so A i is zero. After that, well, the z i axis is obvious, it passes through this and then there is the um, direction thing which one has to take care of, so you can pick either one of them. And <clears throat> so the interesting part here is that when you look at this link physically, you would suggest that you know there is some kind of a length of the link, right? It, it looks like a piece which is this long, you know, roughly say from here to here. Now this length does not enter the picture at all in this scenario. So this is the interesting part to note about it. And the rest of it is pretty pretty much okay, alpha is pi by 2 if you have taken the cross product. Now let's look at the same link which is just reversed a little in the sense that this axis is the i minus 1th axis and this one is the i-th axis. Okay. Now wherever you had the origin of the i minus 1th axis from there to this line this length now becomes di, okay. So in some sense, the physical size of the link or at least a physical measure of the link is now captured by the dh parameter, okay. The rest of it is same, you still need to locate uh, the zi axis the way you are doing it and then you have a choice of running it either this side or this side and you locate the xi as the cross product and you have this added feature of the length being captured. So, so one thing which you have to be ready for when you are using DH parameter is that your intuitive sense of the size of a link may not come out when you use the DH parameters, but it is a unique set which works pretty well. So far we have not talked about the joint angle theta i at all, that is because we have only been dealing with rotary joints and so it is variable. And so in the next set of cases, those involving translating joints, we will identify the tangle. The fourth case we want to look at is uh, uh, two successive translating axes. In this case, the axes intersect. So AI is zero and uh, axis are perpendicular, alpha A is zero and in this case, uh, the, the two zi and zi minus 1 are at 90 degrees, so alpha is 90 degrees. Now, this is the interesting part is in this case theta i has a constant value. Now, when I have zi minus 1 defined and I have zi defined, I establish xi as the common normal or the cross product, I mean it is the same thing, okay. So this is defined uniquely, but I do not know how x i minus 1 was defined originally because that was dependent on the previous joint. So depending on what the orientation of this is and this is, right, we will have an angle between them, okay. And we can measure that angle pretty much because we know that this axis z i minus 1 is perpendicular to both of them. So we measure about z i minus 1 and we measure this angle out. But it is fixed and when this link translates, 
it doesn't change only thing that will happen is this will move back and forth so this di can change and then there's just a small change in which the two are not intersecting okay so the two are not intersecting then xi is along the common normal and the rest is follows okay so these are then the special cases that we are dealing with now <clears throat> i have circulated a sheet okay so for those who have come in late uh, just pass the sheets ahead now there's a written part and there's a pict pictorial part of the sheet the, the first part which is uh, got stuff written on it what i've done is the section which i deal dealt with right now i have formally put it down in form of a algorithm okay now this is not a sacrosanct thing different people or well, there have been variation in the assignment of dh parameters okay so especially if you look at books which are written before uh, 1990 or so some of the books have a slightly different form of doing it this is more or less being settled settled into now okay so there are multiple forms question is how are they clustered together and what is convenient to use i find this form convenient to use so we'll go along with it and I'll later on i'll explain why is this form convenient to use so we start by assigning the z0 axis along the axis of the first joint okay then you can appropriately assign x0 and y0 axis they are free so you can rotate them around and assign them now after this your dh parameter the way of doing it kicks in and everything else is automatic until we get to the last leg so let's just run through it so what you do next is you start after the z0 so starting with z1 axis you start assigning it along the the second joint okay and this is fixed to the first link so these indices are important then you locate the x1 axis along the common normal and so in the middle if it's a special case you can take care of it you locate the y i axis as the cross product now look at this formal definition of di set di equal to the distance from the origin of the i minus 1 at coordinate system to the point where x i intersects z i minus 1 and this is measured along the z i minus 1 axis now this last part is important because for the axis we said it's a line so the z axis could have been assigned in two different directions right this or that but once you have assigned a direction for the z axis you must use that and you must measure di along that distance okay otherwise the mathematics will not be consistent okay it's like you can't use left handed coordinate systems right then everything goes for a toss <clears throat> so similarly theta i is equal to rotation about the z i minus 1 axis again now rotation about an axis means typically you put your thumb along the direction of the axis and if the rotation is in the same sense of a curl of your right hand fingers then you take it as positive if it's the other way around take it as negative it's important to remember that well whether it's important or not is uh, you can an answer exam paper and you can walk away you know if it's wrong i'll just mark it wrong real less points still graduate the course you'll forget about it but if you are in the field and you're working with a robot then it's important otherwise it'll do crazy things <clears throat> similarly set ai equal to the dis from the zi minus 1 axis to the zi axis measured along the x i axis similarly alpha i now this is rotation about the x i axis needed to rotate now you're rotating the z i minus 1 at axis to the z i axis you go back and you repeat till the last joint end after you have done this you have a little problem how do you assign zn 
because to assign Zn, the algorithm would have told you put it along the i n plus 1th axis, which is not there. So that is a crucial point. So how do I, but I still need to assign a coordinate system which is attached to the nth link. So what you do is very simply you assign it along Zn minus 1. Okay. If the last joint is rotational, you assign Xn such that dn is equal to 0. If it is translational, assign Xn such that theta n is equal to 0 and you are done okay, with the assignment set. Now, <clears throat> you take care of the signs of the link correct and I have already specified the directions of measurement and this should be followed. Okay. So, what we will do next is uh, you can flip over to the next sheet right? and where you have this uh, Okay, the drawing of the Puma. Okay. Now we will try and assign this online so you can try and follow me okay, on the sheet. So in this case, you already see that the Z0, Y0, and X0 are already assigned. Okay, so I do not have to worry about it. Okay, and the Z0 goes along the first axis. Okay, so, I do not need to worry about it and my y0 and z0 are there. Now, which is the next? So, this is what is called the waist rotation, okay, which is specified. Yeah, well, you can assign them along the walls of the room or whatever, yeah. You have some freedom. It is, yeah, it is in your hand. Actually, this fundamentally really does not matter because uh, if you want to use some other coordinate system you know for your global reference you can use it and you will see it at the end of today you can very easily write a transformation which will bring you to this coordinate system if you want to okay so it's not that you have to define everything from this world coordinate system so but you must start your dh parameter set from this coordinate system so <coughs> next axis that you see is the shoulder rotation okay which is given here to be of 310 degrees and it's not very clear in the figure but let us assume that if it's a wise designer he will make sure that two, these two axes intersect okay so you have two choices i will simply choose to put the z1 in that direction Okay. So, these two are now intersecting axis. So, where will the x1 go? Perpendicular both of this. In fact, what I have suggested is that you take the cross product, right. So, the x1 goes off in that direction. Okay. Now, what is the other thing that we have to do now once we have done all this? We will start finding the dh parameters, right. So, there is I will have 6 set of dh parameters theta d alpha and a okay so how do we find this out what will be value of theta for the first joint theta is a variable right so in this case we can find the angle between the x0 and the x1 axis if you want to they seem to be anti parallel 180 degrees we can write that down okay but there is no point writing it down because once you start actuating the joint, see once you start actuating this joint, this x1 will keep spinning around. So, it will change, right. Now, this is a slightly thick pen. So, 
ideally i would have written down var okay so here i'll just put in v to indicate that it is variable okay what about d is it d or 13 inch Hmm? That is the huh? zero. But look at that uh, in the algorithm which is given. Look at the point six. So I'm talking about d one. So it will be set d one equal to the distance from the origin of the zeroth coordinate system to the point where x one intersects z zero, right? Measured along the z zero axis. So what is d? Is thirteen, right? So let's just put in thirteen. What about alpha? Is the rotation about the x one axis? So it's ninety. And a zero because. The axis intersects, so length of common normal is zero. Okay. So where is the next axis? The elbow rotation. Okay. And is this a general case or a special case? Special case. Two are parallel, right? So I'll have an infinite number of common normals. So. <coughs> So the z2 is pretty clear. It's along this. The question comes: Is what is the direction of x2? So what do you do then? Is now this has to be along the common normal, and I want to make sure that it passes through the origin of the previous coordinate system. So this becomes x two. Okay. So as you, as I mentioned earlier, I'll not deal with the y-axis. You can always get rid of the cross product. I'm not worried about it at all. Now with this, can we pick up the parameters? Like I said, theta is anyway a variable in this case, so we don't worry about it. Um, what about d? Hmm? D zero, alpha. Alpha is zero. What about a? A is eight. Are you sure this eight is not the D? How are you so sure? Well, essentially, remember D is measured along a z-axis, and A is measured along a x-axis, right? So you have this now. <coughs> which is the next axis? Ah, now comes your sense of. Huh? Wrist rotation. Are you sure? The one before that, right? There is this one, right? This one comes first. I mean, just by looking at the figure, you can figure out, right? You have seen enough drawings by now. Okay. 
Now, this is a little complicated. So, this is uh, really not directly deducible from the figure, but so I draw this. So, now the big question is does this axis intersect? Does well, definitely we will have a z3 running somewhere in this line, right. So, the important question is uh, does z2 intersect z3, right. There are two lines in the plane, so they seem to intersect, but does it intersect in reality is the big question, okay. How is, how has the system been made? And normally, if I were a designer, I would try to design it so that it passes through that axis, okay. But in this case, we are not sure whether it does pass through the axis or not, but does not matter if it does not, if it does, but this is the interesting consequences of that. So, let us assume that it intersects, what is the only difference? The only difference is that if it does intersect, this is uh, z2, z3, so x3 will go below because of the cross product nomenclature that we follow. If they were not intersecting, then it will go along the common normal, okay. And now, because x3 is intersecting, the link length is 0. If you are not intersecting, you would have a finite link length, okay. Nothing else changes too much, okay. So, again, it is a rotary joint, so theta is variable your what is the d value? Now, let us think again. Now, I definitely see that this coordinate system was located somewhere along the trunk, right, along the trunk of the manipulator. This coordinate system was middle of the trunk of the manipulator. This one is definitely to the, is to this side of the trunk because it is, and this is further to this side, right. So, there is and so now something passing even to the middle of this will be offset at least from this waste axis, right. And there is this little length L shown there, the number is not given, is shown there, okay. So, you have to look at a robot and then understand what is the, I mean somewhere down the line you have to understand this axis. If you, when you actually physically see a robot, you will not have a problem, you can measure it. Okay. So, there is this L and so this is the essentially the I mean should be same as this length here, it is not come out because of the sketch, but that is okay. okay. So, and this is the length which is measured along the z axis, so it should be a d, right. And if you look carefully, I want to measure from origin of this coordinate system to this, I am measuring the length in this direction this z axis goes in other direction. So, it will be minus L. Alpha is again 90 and A is let us put it as 0 or if the offset is known. Now, you have to be careful if you follow the cross product norm or the direction which I have mentioned then usually alpha will turn out to be 90 degrees, rare case is minus 90 when it is forced by some other things. So, which is the next axis? Wrist rotation. So, somewhere down in there. We have Z4. Where is X4? pointing upwards, what about the parameters? Right. 
Well, this is again a variable. Well, essentially, we can look at that there is another 8 sticking in there somewhere, right? <coughs> and that is along the Z3. So, it must be a and it is along the it is from here to here, right? So, it is along the positive direction of Z3. So, it is plus alpha is again 90 degrees and A is 0 because the joints are intersecting. So, come to the 5, uh, well the z axis will go in this direction, okay. so x 4 is same as z 5, okay. x 4 is same as z 5 and so z 4 is in this direction, z 5 is in this direction. So it points back in this direction. That is x five. Z four. Z four. Z five. Oh, it should be in this direction, right? Z3 and X5. Okay. So again, you can fill up the parameters. This is zero. This is 90 degrees, and this is zero. Okay. Now we come to the last one. Now we do not have an axis, so we simply put it in this direction, right? What about the X6? Just look in there. What am I doing? This is the this is the if the last joint is rotational, assign x six as that d is equal to zero. So basically, say that don't move the x around, just keep it there. So it doesn't matter. I can just simply choose to put it here. Okay. So this is the variable. This is zero. Zero and this is 0. Now, note that the x 6 does not matter because once you start rotating that axis, the x 6 will move away from x 5 and then you will measure the angle in between them. Okay. So, in this exercise, what you have done now is that you have assigned both the d h parameters okay. and at the same time, you have gone around and um, assigned the coordinate systems to uh, this robot. Okay. So, now we are ready to go a step further. So, now we have assigned the coordinate system, we have moved around. So, next thing on the ball game is to learn a little bit more about coordinate systems. So, we will do that. So, this is uh, regarding transformations as they are used in robotics. And so, this you can see is kind of like a standalone module, right? A standalone lecture. Okay, so, we will just go through it. And to start with, we already know about rotations in a plane, right? How what happens when frames move around in a plane? You must have done it in the mechanics course when you did your stresses, right? And transformations. The question that we ask is. <coughs> what happens you take a point p a physical point p which is there in space somewhere or in the plane you can do and you can draw as many coordinate systems as you want okay so i have drawn two sets capital x capital y and small x small y the question that we ask is now this point p has coordinates p small x p small y in the small x small y frame and has the coordinates p capital x and p capital y in the capital x capital y frame so the question that we ask is see how are these coordinates capital x capital y and small x small y related so you can do a little bit of trigonometry and you've already known this i think from your basic mechanics course that capital p p capital x is equal to small p x cosine of theta minus p y sine of theta 
you can just easily find the co components of this. And ca P capital Y is equal to P small x sin theta plus P small y cosine of theta. Okay. Which in the matrix form becomes, you can write this as P capital X, P capital Y is equal to cosine of theta, sine of theta, sine theta, cosine of theta. This is a 2 by 2 matrix and this. So what happens is if you have the coordinates of a point in this small x small y frame, you can find the coordinates in the capital X capital Y frame by multiplying it with a 2 by 2 matrix. Right? Now this is how you transform points in a coordinate frame in the, in the plane to another coordinate frame. Now this has been obtained by rotating the frame capital X capital Y by theta about the origin. Now let us look at it in 3D. Okay. Now in 3D we know that we are rotating about the Z axis and the same interrelationship <coughs> should work because the Z component will not change at all. Okay. But note carefully in going from 3D, I have done something a little different. I have gone to a 4 by 4 matrix okay, and I've written Px, Py, Pz because there are three coordinates and I have tagged this one along. Okay. Now this thing, this kind of a matrix is called a homogeneous transformation matrix. Okay. We will see later down the course as to why this is called a homogeneous coordinate matrix um, because um, if you do projective geometry then uh, this one turns up magically and is very useful to do some other things, some other operations. And for example, if you are doing graphics then uh, these parameters which are always 0, 0, 0, 1 in our case are used to do um, perspective and things like that. <clears throat> so we can write more matrices like this and in general what we land up with is a transformation matrix T which will convert uh, coordinates of points in the jth frame to the coordinate in the ith frame. Okay. And so these are all 4 by 4 matrix. Now this matrix consists of subparts. So there is this 3 by 3 part which is an orthonormal rotation matrix which means that this vector A, this vector B and this vector C they are orthogonal to each other. Their dot products are 0 and cross product of uh, this and this gives you this. Okay. It is also true of the rows okay. though it is I mean uh, I have not written it, I have written the vectors like this. Okay, so it is orthonormal matrix. Well, you can always derive that if this is the property which is satisfied. Okay. And these are essentially normal. That means a squared, a x squared plus a y squared plus a z squared is equal to 1. So this is a property which is which they have. And then there is this matrix which is the translation matrix. So if the origin is translated by px, py, small x, small px, small py, small pz, then this goes in here. This is always in robotics, this is always 0, 0, 0 and 1. It is in this form. Okay. And points are in column order and with a 1 tag to them at the end. Okay. The 1 is somewhat like a lantern. Because without the 1, I cannot incorporate the uh, translation and the rotation into a single matrix. See, note carefully, when you have this, then the P or Px for example will get multiplied with the 1. So the Px, get, Px gets added to the x coordinate in one frame. So that is the consistent system which is there. So you can then go and you can quickly find out what some of the other matrices are. So you, we have already derived rotation about z by theta and then you can have x by theta, y by theta and then the pure translation matrix. Okay. So these matrices have lots of symmetry. Okay. So for example, if you look at this one, right, nice and symmetric, set of 1s and zeros, 
on this side okay and only the corner elements are filled up there is sin theta there is minus sin theta cos theta cos theta so very interesting property uh, what are the interesting properties here what is the derivative derivative of sin theta cos theta derivative of cos theta minus sin theta okay or cos theta derivative minus sin theta derivative of sin theta cos theta nice property how do you get this matrix from this if I take this and I kind of move it across, move it down, just the 3 by 3 matrix, right? Move it to the right, move it down, okay? So then this cos theta goes here, this minus sin theta goes here, sin theta cos theta and the 1 goes from here. There is a wrap around, so you wrap and go to the left on top. So if you remember one of them, you know all of them, okay? So there is nothing to worry about, though as a rule in all the uh, exams that I take, I will always allow you to bring in a A4 size sheet of paper into the classroom with anything you want written on it. So you can write it down in there, do not have to memorize it, but if you forget it, suppose you are walking on the street and you see a robot and you want to <laughs> do transformations, you can always remember this, if you remember the well, this is very easy to remember because all you have to remember is cosine of theta, sine of theta. Then the derivative comes here, derivative comes here. That's all you have to remember. Rest is done. Okay. And uh, <coughs> um, and then you have the translation. So there are these very nice properties which these matrices have. Now comes the next interesting part. Now suppose I have a frame which is translated and rotated from the origin, right. Now suppose I know that this is translated and rotated, so I can write down this. Now the interesting part is if I take the x vector and I write down the direction cosines for it, I will get ax, ay, az. I take the y vector, write down the direction cosines for it, I will get this and I will get this as the direction cosine for the z and I have the distance op, I just write down op x component, y component, z component and this gives me a matrix. Now this matrix, okay, so now this matrix I derived, it is a complete description of this frame in this frame, right, it is a complete description. And the interesting part is this description of this frame small x, small y, small z in capital X, capital Y, capital Z, this description of the frame is the same as the point transformation matrix, okay. So which is a very, which is very nice for us. It is not obviously implied, but if you think a little, you will say, okay, actually, you know, that is obvious because uh, if there is a point P which is defined somewhere here and then you know there are these, there is a vector going from here to here, then each of its components will be resolved according to the direction cosines, right. And then you just need to add the translation component to it and then you will have the vector here, that is obvious, okay. But it is obvious now, it was not obvious before Rene Descartes, okay, or Descartes, right. So, so these are all things which work out very conveniently for us that the description of a frame is the same as the transformation matrix. And finally, we ask about inverse transforms. The question we ask is, okay, we have a description of the ith frame in the jth frame, right? Now, I can also describe the jth frame in the ith frame. How are these two related, right? And so I can describe, create a transformation which maps a point in the, a P which is defined in one frame into another frame, but if I want to go the other way around, do I have to do it from scratch again, okay? So <clears throat> again, it's a, it's a very interesting case that um, the mathematical matrix inverse, so the matrix inverse is a defined process, right? The 4 by 4 matrix inverse is a mathematical process. 
the mathematical matrix inverse works as the inverse transformation also it's not always it's not always true right for example <laughs> differentiation integration are not exactly inverses of each other I mean, there are there are functional inverses but you cannot have a matrix and then just change the do a matrix inversion and you do not get integration and differentiation there are many such processes right where you where it does not work <laughs> so in this case matrices work very nicely and not only that for homogeneous matrices there is this brilliant result which tells you that okay so originally i had ax ay az now i've written them as rows that's fine that you already know that if you have a 3 by 3 orthonormal matrix then you can do this the transform is the inverse but this part is very interesting so you took op you took op you dot take the dot product take op take the dot product with b take op take the dot product with c and these form the three elements so op was this was this vector so you dot the dot product with a b and c they form with a minus sign in the front they form the translation components so you do not actually have to invert the 4 by 4 matrix so even if you are writing a program don't use the matlab inversion routine that is going to be less efficient than just coding this into the inverse algorithm okay so now we have to get into relative transformations which i'll keep for the next class okay so we'll stop here today and so what we'll now ask is we have been talking about one transformation right now suppose i want to do a obviously i want to do a series of rotations i want to rotate about x axis then i want to rotate about y axis in the middle i want to translate i want to do these activities so how do i carry out or do these tasks okay so we we'll look at this in the next class